very good morning friends so i hope you're all safe as well as healthy well in this particular month i have been talking in terms of various aspects of india 7 which talks about making a cash flow statement today i'm going to take a very interesting issue and you know the interesting part is that this issue is not addressed by india 7 in fact the institute in the education material which has been issued for india 7 talks about the concept of you know if there is a securitization of receivable then how do you tackle that in terms of a cash flow statement you know we can understand this in terms of you know what indis 109 talks about because when you're looking at a securitization of receivable it is supposed to be evaluated in terms of indis 109 that whether it is eligible for de recognition or not let's dig more deep into this and see what indis 109 tells you and accordingly whether it would be a financing activity or an operating activity as far as indis 7 is concerned let's find this in detail in this video jo bache ca final may 22 ki taiyari kar rahe hain unke liye an academy par main leke aa raha hu जो इंस्टीट्यूट ने मे 22 के लिए फाइनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग का लेटेस्ट आरटीपी रिलीज किया है उसके डिस्कशन के लिए आप मुझे लाइव ज्वाइन कर सकते हैं और ये स्पेशल क्लास आप एब्सोलूटली फ्री वॉच कर सकते हैं यदि आप प्लेटफॉर्म पर नए हैं तो मेरा कोड इस्तेमाल कीजिए सी ए के बी टेन और इस क्लास को आप ज्वाइन कर सकते हैं मंडे ट्यूजडे और वेनजडे मैं आपके साथ मॉर्निंग में 8:20 ट्वेंटी एम पर जुड़ूंगा इन क्लासेस के लिंक्स आपको डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स के अंदर मिलेंगे तो इन क्लासेस को ज्वाइन कीजिए और मे 22 के आरटीपी की आपके साथ एक डिटेल डिस्कशन करेंगे आइए लेट्स क्रैक इट एज ए जस्ट सेड द दिस इशू वट वी डिस्कसिंग इन दिस वीडियो इज नॉट एलेबोरेटेड इन इंडिया सेवन but there is a question which is given in the education material and i have reproduced the extract of that question out here explain how securitization of receivable is presented in the statement of cash flows in the books of the originator now i think before i come to the response on this particular question let me first of all you know illustrate at the back of the mind what does indis 109 talk about when you're looking at securitization of receivable well i would say there are two situations one is when you look at a securitization of receivable either it is eligible for de recognition as per indis 109 or the second case is that it is not eligible for de recognition now if it is eligible for de recognition in this particular case it is treated as good as a sale of receivable and if it becomes a sale of a receivable then in that particular case it is treated as an operating activity the education material also you know clarifies one thing that even if the company is not regularly entering into these kind of transactions still it would be considered as an operating activity because this is nothing but you can say is as good as an early correction of receivable is concerned but on the other hand if as per indis 109 it is not eligible for de recognition then you're going to reflect a liability instead of de recognizing an asset because when financial assets are not eligible for de recognition they are recognized as a financial liability in that particular case it becomes a financing activity so which means in a nutshell we can say that there are two situations one is if the securitization is eligible for de recognition then it's operating activity but if it is not eligible for de recognition that particular case it is considered financing activity in nature let me still take you quickly on the response which was given by the institute in the education material you know first of all it makes a very clear cut mention that there is no guidance in india 7 with regard to the presentation of cash flows arising on account of securitization and it draws a reference in terms of the requirement of indus 109 and it says that in substance it is similar to a sale of receivable and it says accordingly such cash flows arising from securitizations which are de recognized as per indus 109 would be classified as operating activities and very clearly it says even if the entity does not enter into such transactions regularly 
So the only thing to be kept in mind is that if it is eligible for derecognition, then it is undoubtedly an operating activity. And then it adds on further in other cases where the receivables are not derecognized in the books of the originator, the proceeds are recognized as a liability and thus these transactions would be taken as a part of the financing activity. Isn't that pretty interesting indeed? That's all in this particular video. Thank you for watching. Take care and bye-bye.